Hello, welcome back. Um, I'm Fraser Brind again, and this is part two of my talk on link floor homology and link detection. Okay, so let's recall that um, the question we're interested in generally is the bottom question, namely which links have not floor homology or link floor homology indeed of a given type. And so I ended part one of this, this talk by, by giving the, the two following results. So not floor homology text, um, these various knots, so T two two n for all n, um, and large two large two two n cables of both the trefoil and the sankfoil, um, and then also um, link floor homology detects um, T M M M for all n, uh, M M N cables of T two three and T two five for n sufficiently large. So in this in this section of the talk, my this part of the talk, my goal is to explain where these results come from. And to do that, I'm going to have to talk about another couple of families of knots. So the first of these are knots from Dane surgery. So let's let's recall, recall what what Dane surgery is. So with Dane surgery, what you do is you take a knot, um, and you cut out a small neighborhood of it. So this is this is shown in orange here, and we're going to care about this this small meridian here of the of the knot K. So taking a knot, we've taken a, we cut out a small neighborhood of it, and what we're going to do is immediately glue back in this neighborhood. But we're going to do so in an interesting way. So we've got re-glue this this um, this neighborhood knot, which is of course a soft torus. Except when we re-glue it, we're going to um, re-glue it in such a way that this meridian is glued to some more interesting curve in the boundary of the solid, the boundary of the um, exterior of the, of the knot. And in fact, this is sort of determined by this, this parameter n. So n is some whole number. And so we're going to call the we're going to call the image the image of the core of this solid torus we're regluing. We're going to call that uh, the core of n surgery on k and denote it by denote it by kn. Okay. So that's that's one type of type of knot we're going to care about, core of n surgery. We're also going to care about um, other type of knots called Type knot called L space knot. L space knots. So what's an L space knot? Well, an L space knot is a knot for which the rank of the core of N surgery, um, the knot which is described, the rank of the knot floor homology of that is equal to N for some N. Okay, so this definition is strange for various reasons. Um, you might think it's strange because it's sort of the, the, it's in terms of knot floor homology, which is maybe a little, a little unusual. Um, and if you've seen the definition of L space knot before, you might notice this definition is rather different from the standard definition um, given, but I promise it's the same. Um, and if you want to see it's the same, you can uh, use some work of Ethikari or you can use Hansen Rasmussen Watson's um, immersed curve interpretation of border floor homology um, to, to, yeah, to deduce this is in fact the same as the sort of usual definition of L space knot. Okay, so yeah, the, the definition is very abstract. So maybe let me give you some sort of concrete examples of L space knots. Um, they include the unknot, um, the trefoil, right hand trefoil, and T25, which is shown here. Okay, so these are all L space knots, and there's sort of infinitely many other examples of L space knots, but these are the three that we'll, that we'll care about most for the purpose of this talk. Okay. So here are there's some examples. Here are some sort of structural properties of L space knots. Um, so they're they're fibered, um, which means that they're if you look at the link complements, it's swept out by an S1 parameters, um, S1 parameter family of um, ciphered surfaces. So they're fibered, they're also prime, which are also bell bottom bell thick. And this what this means is that you can't write your or you can't write an L space knot as the connected sum of two other knots. They're also strongly quasi positive. Um, by result of hidden. And um, in fact, they're not floor homology is determined by their Alexander polynomials by result of those of sum. And this this sort of is in contrast to this sort of general setting where not floor homology determines Alexander polynomial, but in, in general, Alexander polynomial does not determine not floor homology. Um, so this, this result here is saying that the opposite, opposite is true um, for L space knots. Um, and yeah, we'll use this fact later on. Okay. So those, those are all the new knots we need. Um, we're also going to need some, some new free manifold things. So I'm going to talk a bit about sutured manifolds just now. 
So what is a sutured manifold? Well, a sutured manifold is one that can be um, constructed via the following process. And I should maybe say balanced sutured manifold here, strongly balanced sutured manifold, but I'll uh, sweep those terms off the rug. So sutured manifold is one that can be constructed by the following process. First of all, you start off with the surface boundary. Um, you then add equal, equal numbers of homologically independent alpha and beta curves um, to each component. So I'm, I'm uh, drawing alpha curves in red, beta curves in blue. So in this particular picture, I've got a surface with one boundary component, and it's got one alpha curve and one well, complicated, complicated looking beta curves. And then what you do is you attach um, disks um, along the alpha and beta curves. Um, and then you thicken up the resulting complex. So this gives you some sort of free manifold. And this process is supposed to remind you very much of the sort of construction of, of, um, of not floor homology as we hate our diagrams as we um, discussed in the in the previous part of this talk. Okay. So that's that's sutured manifolds. Um, I guess I want to give you some examples of, of things which are sutured manifolds. So link complements to begin with are are examples of sutured manifolds. And also surface complements. So if you take a, a surface embed in S3 and if you remove a neighborhood of it, that is um, going to be a going to be a sutured manifold of some description. Okay. So the key fact that we're going to use about sutured manifolds is they they have this operation called sutured sutured decomposition. So what is what is that operation? Well, if you have a sutured manifold and it has a surface S embedded in a sufficiently nice way in the sutured manifold, then you can construct a new sutured manifold by removing a small neighborhood of S. Another way of thinking about this is like, if you have the surface S embedded in, in the sutured manifold, you can imagine sort of blowing air into, into S and sort of inflating it and thereby getting another, and the, the claim is that this gives you another, another sutured manifold. Okay. So we call that we call that sutured um, sutured decomposition, and we're actually only going to care about sutured decomposition in some very special circumstances. Um, main one is the following. So if you've if recall that a two to n cable is sort of um, characterized by a number of topological properties, including the fact that it bounds annulus. And so if uh, well as mentioned, like link exteriors are examples of sutured manifolds. This sutured manifold has an annulus embedded in its exterior. What we can do is we can perform a perform a sutured manifold decomposition along that annulus exterior. And when we do that, when we imagine sort of blowing air into this annulus in the link exterior, well, you can sort of see that what you end up with is um, is in fact the, the exterior of the core range version. Okay. And maybe it's not super obvious. Maybe what what is obvious is that what you end up is like the, you end up with a sutured manifold, which um, is the exterior of the not K. Um, but you have to be a little a little careful, um, and so that's why I'm, that's why I'm saying um, core bands for your own K. Yeah. If if you have questions about that, you're welcome to, to ask me during my office hours, which I guess are scheduled for the, the weekend at some point. Okay. So this is the the main operation on. Um, on, on the sutured manifolds that we're going to care about. So how does this relate to Hecker floor homology and, and whatnot? Well, it relates by sutured floor homology. So Hecker floor homology is actually an invariant of free manifolds in addition to being an invariant of, of, of knots and links. Um, and so what Juhasz did is he extended Hecker floor homology for the free manifolds to the setting of, of sutured manifolds. So what Juhasz does is he assigns to each Sutured manifold, which you'll recall has a picture like this, it's sutured floor homology. And he does this sort of in the, in the way you might expect, having, having defined sutured manifolds in, man in the manner which we did, and um, given the, the construction of the not floor homology we gave, gave previously. Okay. So let me give some examples. Um, so if you have the link, if you take a, take a link, and you look at the sutured floor homology with exterior, then that sutured floor homology is exactly the length floor homology. That's kind of useful. Another fact, and this is the one that's mostly 
perhaps most useful for us is the, is the following. So if you've got a suture, suture decomposition of one suture manifold to another suture manifold, then um, the suture, suture floor homology of Z is actually a direct sum end of the suture floor homology of Y. What's more, like this, you know specifically which direct sum end it is in, in some appropriate sense. So this is a great theorem, and it's, it allows you to prove, prove all sorts of cool results. Like you can use it to prove that uh, link floor homology detects the first norm. You can use it to show that it's um, not floor homology detects Euler characteristic and detects the links or fiber and, and stuff like that. So this is a really powerful, powerful result, and it's going to be the one we one we use. <clears throat> We're going to want to use it in in a specific specific case. So an example of applying the Yukos theorem is the point. So if you look at not floor homology of the core of answer if you're on, on K, then that's actually going to be a sum ends of the link floor homology of the two domain cable. So why is this? Well, we mentioned earlier that um, there's a suture floor composition decomposition from exterior of from from the exterior of K K two two N to um, the exterior of the core of N surgery on K. Um, and so the sutured floor homology of the core of n n on k is going to be a sum end by the previous by Yuhash Girald of the sutured floor homology of the exterior of the 2 to n cable of k. But these sutured floor homologies are exactly the not floor homology and link floor homology respectively. And so we, we in fact have, have this result, result here. Okay. And this is really the result that gets gets all our results to take. So with that said, I can I can state our real I can state our real result. So what is it? Well, it says that if L is a link, and that link has the same not floor homology as the two to n cable of some L space not k, and n is sufficiently large, then well we're going to ask sort of what what do you know about L, and what we know about L is that it's um it's going to be a two to n cable of some not k prime. And what's more, that not k prime is going to be an L space knot. And even, even stronger than that, it's going to have the same knot floor homology as um, the original lot k. Okay. So this is going to this result is going to imply the the um, the result uh, given at the start of start of part two and at the end of part one. Um, and I'll explain that in a second. But maybe for now, let me let me give a sketch of the proof. So how does this go? So you, sub, you start by assuming you've got some link L, which has um, the same not floor homology as the core of, oh, sorry, as the 2 to n cable of K, where K is an L space naught and N is sufficiently large. So you start by assuming that. And well, what you want to do is you want to show, first of all, that L is the 2 to n cable of some rock K prime. That was, that was one of the conclusions of our theorem, and so we're going to try and show that first. And recall from part, part one of this talk, we have this sort of topological characterization of two to n cables. So there are links that um, have two components, um, they have linking number n, and they bound, bound annuli. So we show that we, we, can, we can prove that as well. So L, to see that L has two components, you have to sort of run some sort of, um, run some sort of argument with Maslow gratings of, of the not floor homology. Um, so I won't, I won't talk, much, talk much more about that, but it, you can show that it has two, two components. Um, you then want to show these two components have linking number n. And this follows from the fact that um, uh, not floor homology text the linking number of two component links, which is one of the results we mentioned at the, in, in part one of this talk. And then finally, we want to show that L bounds an annulus. And to do that, well, we use um, uh, Alpha Sabo's result that's Alpha Sabo needs results that's not floor homology detects the Euler characteristic of links. And so using that, we can read off from not floor homology that's um, uh, the link L bounds an Euler characteristic of zero surface. And with a little more thought, you can argue that that, that Euler characteristic of zero surface must, surface must in fact be, be the annulus. 
So we've shown immediately that L is a, well, not immediately, but we've shown that uh, L is a two to n k plus some little k point. So we're, we're so good with, with this part of the conclusion of the theorem. And what we want to do now is we want to show that k prime, well, first of all, it's an L space knot. And then after that, we want to show that it has the same knot for a module as k. Um, OK, so why, how do we? How do we know it's the cable of an L space knot? Well, we sort of use this result of U hash. Um, so U hash um, says, or the particular case of U hash result that we wanted to use, says that not sort of, not sort of module the core end surgery on K is an, a direct sum end, a specific direct sum end of the not sort of module of the two to n cable of K. And so what we know, we know, we then know that the not for homology of the core of n surgery on k prime is going to be a rank n. So this follows this follows from the previous discussion. And so since it's um, a not since it's a knot, such the core of n surgery on it has rank n, it must be an L space knot. So we're done with this. We've, we've deduced that our our knot is an L space knot. And so the only thing left to do is argue that this L space knot has the same not sort of homology as K. So how do we do that? Well, recall that um, from part one of this talk, that um, if you have a PQ cable of some K, you know P and you know Q, then you're, you can determine the Alexander form of um, K from the Alexander form of um, the K, PQ cable of K. Okay, and so this allows us to determine the Alexander polynomial of k prime. And well, to, to deduce that um, the not sort homology of k prime is actually the same as not sort homology of k, we use the fact that for L space knots, the Alexander polynomial of k prime determines the Alexander polynomial. Um, sorry, the Alexander polynomial of k prime determines the not sort homology of k prime. And so we deduce we then we then deduce this last part of the part of the theorem, and so we're we're done. Okay. So this was certainly the most technical part of the talk. Um, so, yeah, if you didn't follow uh, follow along completely, uh, that's that's totally fine. Um, there's also some gaps missing here. And, um, yeah, if you wanna if you wanna um, chat about it with me, you're welcome to, to drop one off stars, which again I, I guess are are scheduled for the weekend. Okay, but let's let's maybe state the. So this is a result for two to n cables. Let's state the result for MMN cables. Here it is. <clears throat> and it's sort of exactly the same. So if L is a link and you have, except it's for link floor homology, and then you have the same link, it has the link, same link floor homology as an MM, MMN cable of an L space knots um, for n sufficiently large, then L is in fact an MMN cable of some knots, k prime. That k prime has the same knot floor homology as, as k and is an L space knot. So it's really the direct analog of the, the previous statement, except for, for link floor homology and M. &M, &M. Okay. So what's the what's the proof sketch? Well, it's sort of the same as before. Um, it's just that instead of using the characterization of two to n cables we, we gave in part one, use the characterization of MMN cables. So recall that was like they had some. Some annuli in their embedded in their exterior satis satisfying certain certain homological conditions related to the these, and these homo homological conditions were related to the first and So what you do to prove this result is you use the fact that link floor homology detects the first and Um And once you once you once you do that, you can sort of deduce that bounds all these sort of annuli satisfying these homological conditions. You do some um, suture decompositions. And the, the proof basically follows the same general outline as the proof for the two to n cables. Okay. So that's the proof sketch there. And I guess I want to I want to conclude by um, discussing how the, the results I advertised both at the start of this talk and the end of the start of the part of it, start of part two of this talk and the end of part one of this talk, how how they how they follow from these results. So let's let's look at say the two twenty cable of T two five. 
So let's suppose we got a link. So we want to argue that there's a unique link with that, with the not floor module of that link. So let's let's do that. So let's suppose we have another link, which has suppose we have a link which has the not floor module, uh, the same not floor module as the two twenty cable of T two five. <clears throat> well, T two five is an L space knot, as we mentioned previously, and uh, ten is more than twice its genus. Thus, the hypotheses of this theorem apply. And what we can deduce is that L is, in fact, a 220 cable of, um, of some knot K prime, some L space knot L K prime. And a K prime has the same knot sort of model as T25. Now, we're only going to care about the last part of that, actually. So it has the same has the same not floor homology as T25. And recall we had this result of um, Farber, Reynolds, and Wang, um, which said that if you have the same not floor homology as T25, you are in fact T25. So in sum, we found that um, our link, which has the same not floor same not floor homology as the 220 cable of T25, in fact is the 220 cable of T25. In other words, uh, not floor homology text. Um, 220 cable of T25. Um, and well, I guess I've stated, I, I guess I've explained how this works in, in one particular case of this, this theorem, but you could, you can, uh, where the same argument works for all, all the other cases. Okay. And yeah, and I guess like maybe it's also worth, worth emphasizing that like these, these detection results for link floor homology and MMN cables, they follow in exactly the same way um, from the corresponding link detection. Okay. So I think maybe I'll, I'll stop there. Um, thank you very much for your attention, for your attention and for watching. Um, yeah, I hope to see you at some of the, the live events later in the week. Bye now.